जना प्रिय प्रिय कर निर्मा सर पूजित नाना शास्त्र विचार नहीं कनि पुन सद्धर्म संस्थापक And now chapter 33 Indirect expressions of ecstatic love Mannam saranyakano Nana shastra vichar nikani kuno Sadharma samasthapako Laughter After he had stolen some yogurt from the pots of two gopis Krishna told one of his gopi friends quote, "My dear beautiful friend I can take oath that I have not stolen even a drop of yogurt from your pot but still your friend Radharani is very shamelessly smelling the flavor of my mouth kindly forbid her from this devious policy of putting her face near mine" unquote. When Krishna was speaking like this the friends of Radharani could not check their laughter this is an instance of laughter in ecstatic love astonishment once brahma was watching all the cows and the cowherd boys dressed in yellow garments and decorated with valuable jewels the boys were expanding their four arms and were being worshiped by many hundreds of other brahmas All the cowherd boys began to express their joyfulness for being with Krishna the supreme brahman. At that time Brahma showed his astonishment by exclaiming, quote, "What am I seeing here?" Unquote. This is an instance of astonishment in ecstatic love. Chivalry. On the bank of the Yamuna once there was the crackling sound of dry leaves. giggling from the cowherd boys and thundering from the sky shri dama was tightening his belt to fight with krishna the conqueror of the demon aga this is an instance of chivalry in ecstatic love lamentation In the 10th canto, 7th chapter, verse 25 of Shrimad Bhagavatam, there is a description of Krishna's being taken away by the whirlwind demon Trinavrta. As Krishna was being thus carried up into the sky, all the gopis began to cry aloud. They approached Mother Yashoda, stating that they could not find the son of Nanda. He had been taken away by a whirlwind. This is an instance of lamentation in ecstatic love. When Krishna was fighting with Kaliya, Mother Yashoda exclaimed, quote, "Krishna is now entrapped within the hoods of the Kaliya snake, and yet I am not tattered to pieces. So I must admit how wonderful is the preserving power of this material body." Unquote. This is another instance of lamentation in ecstatic love. anger When Jatila the mother of Abhimanyu saw Krishna wearing a necklace she could understand that the jeweled ornament had been given to him by Radharani she therefore became absorbed in anger and began to move her eyebrows expressing her anger in ecstatic love Ghastliness There is a statement by Yamuna Acharya to this effect quote Since I have begun to enjoy these transcendental exchanges of love which are always newer and newer whenever I remember the pleasure of my past sex life my lips curl and I wish to spit on the idea unquote This is an instance of ecstatic love in ghastliness dread One old devotee said quote my dear lord When we are away from you we become so anxious to see you again and there is great misery in our lives but then when we do see you there immediately comes the fear of separation 
under the circumstances, both when we see you and when we do not see you, we are subjected to different kinds of tribulation. Unquote. This is an instance of a contradictory mixture of ecstatic love for Krishna. Such ecstatic love is palatable, and expert critics have compared such ecstatic love to a mixture of curd, sugar candy, and a little black pepper. The combined taste is very palatable. <laughs> And now chapter 34, The Nectar of Devotion. The particular type of ecstatic loving sentiment that develops within the heart of a particular devotee is considered to be vibhava. And the resultant manifestations, such as the moving of the eyebrows, fear, astonishment and smiling, which have been explained here and before, are called anubhava. The different causes for developing Anubhava and Vibhava are called Steady Ecstasy or Sanchari Bhava. Whenever there is a recitation of poetry or a dramatic play on the different pastimes of Krishna, the audience develops different kinds of transcendental loving service for the Lord. They enjoy different types of Vibhava, Anubhava and Sanchari Bhava. No one, while remaining on the material platform, should discuss these different descriptions of bhava and anubhava by quoting different statements of transcendental literatures. Such manifestations are displays of the transcendental pleasure potency of the Lord. One should simply try to understand that on the spiritual platform there are many varieties of reciprocal love. Such loving exchanges should never be considered to be material. In the Mahabharat Udyama Parva, it is warned that things which are inconceivable should not be subjected to arguments. Actually, the transactions of the spiritual world are inconceivable to us in our present state of life. Great liberated souls like Rupa Goswami and others have tried to give us some hints of transcendental activities in the spiritual world, but on the whole, these transactions will remain inconceivable to us at the present moment. Understanding the exchanges of transcendental loving service with Krishna is possible only when one is actually in touch with the pleasure potency of the Supreme Lord. In this connection, Sri Rupa Goswami gives an example of the clouds in the sky. The clouds in the sky arise from the ocean, and when the clouds become water again and fall to the ground, they glide back to the ocean. Thus, the pleasure potency of Krishna is compared to the ocean. The pure devotee is the pleasure-possessing cloud and when he is filled with transcendental loving service, then he can bestow his mercy as a downpour of rain, and the pleasure potency returns to the ocean of Krishna. Direct and Indirect Attraction for Krishna Transcendental pleasure derived from devotional service can be divided into two groups, direct devotional service and indirect devotional service. Direct devotional service is divided into five transcendental humors or flavors, and indirect devotional service is divided into seven transcendental humors. Direct devotional services are as follows. Neutrality, servitude, fraternity, paternity, and conjugal love. 
indirect devotional service is divided into laughter, compassion, anger, chivalry, dread, astonishment, and ghastliness. Devotional service can therefore be divided into twelve types, each of which has a different color. The colors are white, multicolored, orange, red, light green, gray, yellow, off-whitish, smoky, pink, black, and cloudy. The twelve different kinds of transcendental humors are controlled by different incarnations of God, such as Kapila, Madhava, Upendra, Rasinga, Nandanandana, Balaram, Kurma, Kalki, Raghava, Bhargava, Varaha, and Matsya. Sustenance, manifestation, expansion, reflection, and lamentation are the five visible symptoms in exchanges of ecstatic love. The test of devotional service can therefore be made in terms of these five symptoms. In the devotional service of neutrality, there is sustenance. In chivalrous devotional service, there is expansion. In compassionate devotional service, there is reflection. In angry devotional service, there is lamentation, and so on. Apparently pitiable condition in devotional service may appear distressing to the inexperienced student, but the feelings of the devotee in this pitiable condition are considered to be ecstatic by expert devotees. For example, the subject matter of the Ramayan is sometimes considered pitiable and distressing to the heart, but actually that is not the fact. The Ramayan narrates how Lord Ram was sent to the forest by his father just when he was going to be enthroned. After Lord Ram's departure, Maharaj Dasharath, his father, died. In the forest, his wife, Sita Devi, was kidnapped by Ravan, and there was a great war. When Sita Devi was finally delivered from the clutches of Ravan, Ravan's whole family and kingdom, and Ravan himself, were vanquished. When Sita Devi came home, she was tried by fire, and after some days, she was again banished to the forest. All of these subjects in the Ramayan seem very pitiable, and they may appear very distressing to the reciter, but actually they are not. Otherwise, why would Hanuman, the great devotee of Lord Ramachandra, read daily about the activities of Lord Ramachandra, as described in the Ramayan itself? The fact is that in any of the above-mentioned twelve transcendental humors of devotional service, everything is transcendentally pleasing. Srila Rupa Goswami mourns in this connection for persons who are in the fire of false renunciation, the dry speculative habit, and who neglect devotional service. Persons who are attached to the ritualistic ceremonies recommended in the Vedas and to the impersonal Brahman cannot relish the transcendental pleasure of devotional service. Sri Rupa Goswami advises, therefore, that devotees who have already tasted the nectar of devotion be very careful to protect devotional service from such dry speculators, formal ritualistic elevationists, and impersonal salvationists. Devotees should protect their valuable jewel of spiritual love from the clutches of thieves and burglars. In other words, a pure devotee should not describe devotional service and its different analytical aspects to dry speculators and false renouncers.
those who are not devotees can never achieve the benefits of devotional service. For them, the subject of devotional service is always very difficult to understand. Only persons who have dedicated their lives unto the lotus feet of the Supreme Personality of Godhead can relish the real nectar of devotion. When one transcends the status of ecstatic love and thus becomes situated on the highest platform of pure goodness, one is understood to have cleansed the heart of all material contamination. In that pure stage of life, one can taste this nectar, and this tasting capacity is technically called rasa, or transcendental mood. Thus ends the Bhaktivedanta summary study of the second division of Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu in the matter of general devotional service.